So you join me right in the middle of working stuff out, which takes sometimes hours, uh, much tea, and there's not much video information. I'm trying to do two things here with this flip front. Well, a third thing I'll be coming to much later, which is creating a shroud here uh, that will kind of go over the top of that because I want this finished for bodywork. Anything I do under here is not really bodywork related. But two things that might be, it's kept a couple of pins on these corners here, which is got a strong point. Uh, with a belt of some sort, that's what I was trying to work out, that you could flip this forward, flip in front thing, and it would stay where it was. Um, all of these, which are like belt key things, you know, they go on your belt and they hold a pack of keys or a, an ID or something. So I've got a pair of them, one per side. We've tested the strength and at the right position they'll hold the weight. We've also been removing the old bushes, which have just got too much play in them, these things. They're good, but for the movement of the body it's no good. And we've, the closest thing I actually find online was actually a Mini. This is holding the rear exhaust on. I've got a pair of them on the Mini already. But as you can see, I've cut it down quite severely to suit my needs. Uh, the top bolt is cut down. They're 5 16th UNF, annoyingly, so it's a bit of a random size. So we've ordered a couple of dome nuts to go on top to make that look nicer. But I think they'll work. Okay, so a lot of work gone into this little corner for the last hour. We're lowering this plate here by three millimetres um, and then adjusting these bushes to fit to suit. So as I said, we've got some dome nuts coming. I might just make a little adjustment on this gutter. Um, obviously, I don't want it to rub on the bonnet where just to ensure this nut will go on nice and cleanly. We might make a little like key ring, the 13 mil or magnetic 13 mil underneath the bonnet somewhere, underneath the scuttle or something. Uh, so my handy, just grab it and then we can whip them off. It's very rare you need to lift the flip front, especially as I'm going to have a bonnet for general maintenance. But it'd be quite cool to just have a little, I don't know, piggy power spanner that just does the job. So let's just whip that off and show you the uh, little wire we've got going on here. All the bolts are in place. We need to do a little bit of body work here. And we, on these here, I need to add a little plate here for a third hole. Um, and then as you can see, there's a little bit of tidying to do before paint, but we, we're getting there. We're getting there. Little bits, little bits, a little bits, and little bits, little bits, little bits, poof, done. So two things going on. Bonnet straps are now finished as far as I'm concerned. I'll just put the nuts the other side off that's painted. Um, we need a little bit of movement. We put a little plate in to support this one and uh, threaded, so welded a big area behind the area there and then just put a tap into it so we can just tap the screw into that one. It's just really difficult to get your finger behind there, um, even with the flip front forwards. So they can be put away until final fit, so that's kind of cool. But these mounts here, the ones that uh, pin on, I, I wanted something a bit more sophisticated than just a clevis pin. Uh, you've seen the Mark I versions, which were like a, an, M8, an M6 bobbin. They just moved around so much. So I had the idea of using these, which are the exhaust bobbins for these. I had to cut them down though, and that actually reduces how rigid they are, and they're still moving around. Um, and it doesn't look very good once you've cut them down. I, I don't know, I had a few ideas of trying to tidy it up. But it also makes it very difficult, because it's a stud, not a bolt. That as the flip front comes down, it comes down at that angle you see. So you kind of have to stretch it on. Uh, I thought about cutting it flush and drilling it out, putting a little M4 tap through it, but just not enough metal in there. The other issue was the nuts for them are massive. It's 5 16th UNF. Not many options for the bits. Again, I thought about cutting these down, put a little nut on the top of that. Seemed to too much faffing. So, these, the Mark III. We've just made these up out of some tube, M6 nut in the back welded on a cap. All welded nice and flush, 17.25 mil, which is what we want. And then what we'll do, we're going to weld these in, and we've got then a bunch of options for different types of bolts that can go on the top that could be nice and flush and looking good. And then we'll put a little bit of neoprene rubber on here, which we're using for other places for sealing and stuff. And that will just reduce a little bit of movement and vibration, just so it doesn't rub itself to death and rust away. Um, but it really won't move anywhere because it will be a fixed bolt. So let's weld them in place next.
you need to sort of get them in place. I've, I've put them offset for, well, let me show you why. If I put them in the middle, they'd stick out too far. We can get rid of the bonnet hinge issue as well. So that'll tuck in nicely like that, and then that'll just line up like that and zoom in. So let's put everything in place. Let's weld them in. Look, it should look a little bit tidier as well, to be fair. Winning. So that's them welded in. They already look neater actually. I haven't ground them back yet. We'll obviously grind them a bit smoother. And let's fit them and show what that looks like. So uh, that's what it looks like at the sort of partial finished point. Much prefer that. We can put a nice little Allen key on a key ring, which will look quite cool. And maybe we'll uh, pop another little tool on there for another little job that we might need to do on the mini occasionally. And uh, yeah, that, well, that's cool, I think. Happy with that. Nice, simple fitment, stainless bolts on there, match everything else. We'll clean it up. And uh, once we've cleaned it up, it will keep out the way of the hinge as well, which is quite nice. So there's our bushes on there. Right, next thing to do on our fr front flip -fli flump is do the shroud on the underside of here. As you can see, we need to surround it so that the air coming out all comes through the intercooler. Next job. Let's do that another time. So we've taken the old ECU and we've sent that away have some bloop, bloop, bloop on it and now we're going to while that's happening we might as well drop the oil and so it looks like put some fresh in ready for a bit of a flush so we got the old engine oil out which looks more like uh, the sort of stuff you paint a fence with but the engine did about 30,000 miles supposedly which meant it had dealer services for warranty issues which probably meant they just cleaned the oil filter externally check the dipstick and polish the engine cover so it's probably original oil, oil good quality I'll probably use that in the lemon later it's kind of a, a greeny tone but yeah lovely it's not terrible not great either and we're gonna chuck in energy ultra JP 7906 for Asian and American car specialist it's the grade I was most interested in and that it was the cheapest on eBay so we're gonna pop that in there uh, it's just for a flush we've got some fancy castrol for uh, after the flush. Literally it'll be just to get the temperatures up, flush this through and we're going to chuck a nice little bit of Forte. I love this stuff and this stuff is designed to be okay for wet belts. So this hasn't got a chain, it's got a wet belt in there uh, just for the worst of both worlds and that's suitable for it. So we're going to chuck that a lot in it. Hopefully that'll flush all the rech out of it and maybe that'll make it run like a dream or just make me feel better. So I purposely cleaned this pan before uh, doing this flush, there is a lot of gunk in that oil. Some, uh, mostly I'd say from the colour, a little bit of water, maybe from it just sitting and condensating. There's a lot of yuck. Hopefully that's all the stuff that sat in the sump, right? Bit, right you know, so it's because I had the engine sat there for a couple of weeks um, after it running briefly, maybe driving it around. So that's good. So getting some junk out like that is is good. And when I do the flush again, I'd like to kind of see that again. And then when we do an oil change in a little while. Maybe never. You know, that'll, that's all good. Hopefully we just get all that skunk out of the engine. Out of it. So officially this old girl takes uh, four litres of engine oil. We've had it draining for a few weeks. You know, just a, just a couple of days. Ew. So, yeah, it doesn't look too bad on that actually. So um, hopefully uh, she is dry. So we'll pop this uh, beautiful gold nectar in. Glum, 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 glum. No dinosaurs in this oil. And stick some Forte in it. And Forte's Forte is cleaning stuff properly. Don't ever stick cheap, unknown oil flushes or fuel cleaners in. I hate Red X, it's horrific stuff. Just stick it in a plastic cup, see what happens to the plastic cup. Forte's the good stuff. It is a couple of quid more expensive, but it can literally save you a couple of quid. 
Right. That is. Just under four litres. You, you can't see that gauge, but that was a good guesstimation, wasn't it? So that'll do for now, because the oil field's probably hasn't drained out. There she is. Add one bottle to a crankcase of oil. Idle for 15 20 minutes. Cool. Are we sure? Add one bottle? It's a lot of bottle. Ah, uh, why not? No problem. Right. We'll run her up. Obviously, she's got no ease to use, so that'll be uh, easy to do. I'll just, you know, pray that the sparks and the fuel goes in. Okay. Engine flush, halfway. Well, it's about time that we sort this out. Now, it does run just fine. The negative side of this setup is that you need to ensure that there's no windscreen so the wiring can, you know, freely run over. Um, other negatives, um, it, it doesn't allow good use of the space that we have. So, we're going to fix that. We need to thin it out, but before we thin it out, we need to work out the connections you know, furthest away, closest, etc., and the way we're coming through the bulkhead. Now, I was a bit concerned that I'd have to somehow get the connections up under there, near a wiper motor that was already busy, because the intake would be coming right across here. I was hoping there'd be some space, and there is. So that's a win. So we're going to utilise the space here, particularly in the centre spot here. Uh, we're going to cut a square hole basically. The wiring will come through that and then we'll create a plate that will come that will bolt from this side. It'll be rectangular so it can actually go through the hole. Four bolts or two bolts or none or just glue and they'll have some um, glands on them that the wiring will go through. We'll have to de-pin these, put the glands on and the plate and stuff and then that will seal them up and it'll be up under there as well so it should be pretty good. So what we'll do is work out where the, where the wiring's coming through here. Um, we need a positive cable to come through, a uh, loom that connects to the engine loom, and a loom that connects to the ECU. And then work out the engine loom ECU connection as well, whether it's going to come up from the left side or go around the back. Got space to go around the back for the one, we need to check for the other. So we're just going to split the two, cut the hole, pull them through the hole and see where we're at. And then we'll know kind of where we need to put the box, and hopefully we can combine the two fuse boxes as well at some point, rather than have two half fused boxes. Lots to do. Let's cut a hole. So there's our wiring hole. Just temporarily put a little bit of like U-shaped um, U rubber just around the sides. Uh, might be permanent thing, I'll tidy it up if necessary, but obviously we don't want to be catching wires and stuff. So next thing to do is pull the wires through that are going to come through this direction and see what lengths they're going to go to. Need to make a determination of where this is going to go. Um, this is like a positive connection to engine loom and battery and it's got a little jumper cable piece inside there so that's quite handy for just popping the bonnet and uh, jump starting if you've got a boot full of stuff alternatively it's so hard to get a bonnet off this might be easier to get the boot but there we go that's what we're going to do next is pull the wire through the hole okay the uh, eagle eyed will notice we flipped the ecu round now because we thought the plugs would be going that way, now they're coming this way. I'm really happy with this setup. It's actually exactly as I wanted it before, but I didn't think I'd get the intake under the bonnet there. I thought I'd have to go around the back. So, good thinking, or something. Um, so this is the plan currently. This is it for tonight, boys, but uh, I'm gonna get another earth strap and just connect that to the bulkhead. So we're just gonna get a short strap ordered up. Um, well, I won't yet, I'll measure it. I need to take the intake out for that. That's basically where the issue is going to be. We need to put another little bolt hole there because actually the bracket's different back to front, but that's fine. One would probably hold it once it's uh, bolted in, but we'll get two in. The wiring for the vac sensor um, will run through probably this plug. plug. We'll find some redundant pins. Um, we've got a bunch of pins not being used for the air conditioning. We'll also use two of those pins and we're going to take it into the engine loom. We're going to run a sensor down the back on the drive shaft for a speedo. Um, and we'll run a, a little Arduino inside the car to give the canvas a signal. Kudos to my big boss with the ECUs. Not Dan this time, another guy who's just 
mega good. Everyone knows him, it's Ruin. Um, so thanks to him, he's hopefully going to hope some coding for that. And then I'll probably put a jumper uh, pack post down here. We've got the space, so that's ideal. So we'll run the positive cable this way, and we'll run this positive cable here. We'll run it back through the loom a little bit, and run it up to here. So it'll be a nice, easy spot just to... But also it kind of doesn't get in the way for the general maintenance stuff. Just pop the bonnet, bunk, and you've got a nice 12 volts there. It's useful for diagnostics as well, not just for jumping stuff. So that's good. And then the other two uh, sit nicely here now, rather than going all the way around here. So what we can do is we know that this is basically the length of our loom and we'll put a coloured piece of tape across there and then we'll know that's the length that we need and then we'll go from there. That's it for tonight though. Maybe bedtime for me, but for you, carry on watching. Whee!